like to thank all of you for attending and joining our webinar. Uh, the role of histopathology and uh, histopathology of diagnosis and prognosis of an illness. Uh, I am Malvika Kanara, the marketing executive at Lead Life Sciences, and uh, we specialize in facilitating research, uh, the research community, community with scientific solutions and uh, enhance their productivity and make them more effective. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to my uh, co-host, Raha Falabed, who is the Innovation and Acquisition Specialist at Lead Life Sciences. Thank you. Thank you, Malvika. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Raha Falabed, the Innovation Acquisition Specialist here at Lead Life Sciences. Uh, firstly, let me start by saying that it is our pleasure to welcome you all to our webinar. And uh, secondly, it's uh, definitely an honor to be introducing you all to uh, one of our speakers for today, uh, Dr. Muhammad. Uh, Dr. Muhammad has contributed greatly to the scientific community uh, through his research in neuroinflammation in uh, uh, St. Vincent's Hospital uh, in uh, Sydney, Australia. And now he's a part of the Medical Laboratory Sciences Department uh, in the University of Sharjah in the UAE. So uh, next we have Alexander Benjamin. He's the key account manager and marketing uh, manager at SLE. Uh, SLE has been pioneering in uh, precision technology and histopathology since 1954 and has been instrumental in setting up uh, pathology labo laboratories across the world. And he uh, accounts for most uh, he, he handles most of the marketing aspects and account management aspects in international markets. He'll be speaking to you today uh, from a manufacturer perspective and, you know, the technologies that will be, uh, that will make the life of a histopathologist uh, more effective and uh, uh, automated. So... And now we'll be moving towards uh, the presentation section of uh, the webinar. And uh, before we start, I'd just like to convey that all attendees will be muted. However, we would definitely love uh, to hear from you all uh, throughout the session. So please leave your uh, comments and thoughts in the uh, chat box and uh, we'll definitely be uh, interacting uh, uh, with you later on. So I shall uh, hand the floor over to Alexander Benjamin. So thank you very much, uh, Malavika and Rahaf, for uh, the introduction. It's true that uh, today I'm going to talk to you from uh, the perspective of uh, the manufacturer and uh, the technology provider in uh, the field of histopathology. Of course, I'm not a doctor. Uh, or a technician, but we have Dr. Mohammed for uh, this reason here for us. So can, can we move to the presentation perfectly? So uh, being a Greek myself, uh, I always like to start uh, this presentation by analyzing the word histopathology because the word itself actually comes uh, from the Greek language. So it, it, it consists of uh, three different words. The first one is histos, which means uh, tissue in Greek. The second one is uh, pathos, which means uh, suffering or any kind of uh, suffering. And uh, the abbreviation logia, which means generally the study of something when uh, you add it in the end of a word. So uh, uh, collectively, these uh, words describe the technique of analyzing the tissue of a living organism or uh, in our situation most commonly of a uh, human in order to understand uh, uh, some uh, pathological diseases that have caused uh, some kind of abnormalities on the tissue. So we talk about a technique that literally saves lives, which is something very important to remember, uh, especially ourselves, when we design uh, this kind of equipment and when we equip labs with that. Uh, so as uh, with everything in this life, uh, things didn't start uh, very fancy. So in the old days, uh, in the process, uh, you would see things happening by hand 
or uh, by any kind of old equipment uh, as the ones uh, you see in the photos. You know, uh, on the left side, you can see the first uh, cryostat that was actually a sleek cryostat uh, and invented by the founder of the company. So even this uh, wasn't there from the beginning, but moving throughout the years, uh, you are going uh, to find, uh, you know, uh, more modern equipment, things uh, that become more automated, more friendly for the users, and uh, most importantly, more accurate for the patients. Because as we said before, we talk about human lives, and this is very important. So, as uh, manufacturers, we always wonder and we always think where is the future of histopathology uh, it's certainly the advanced automation smart connectivity throughout the devices and uh, and uh, with certain kind of uh, software enhance safety for uh, the users of course which is very important improve the ergonomics again something very important for the users that uh, work a lot of hours in the labs last but not least maybe the most important as i said before higher accuracy for the diagnosis and finally the prognosis for the patients so moving on uh, something that uh, we always keep in mind while while we design our equipment and why while we design uh, the next things that coming up is that histopathology has to be for the people and when i say that i mean we we, we always want to have uh, happy lab technicians in uh, the labs that they can do their job easier therefore uh, with less fatigue and uh, this will cause them to be healthier but healthier but also to be more accurate Successful diagnosis, of course, we want to, to get the most of uh, the examinations that uh, are happening in the labs. This, of course, leads to accurate pro prognosis, because if diagnosis is uh, successful, then the prognosis is accurate. And as I said before, you, you will hear me to, to say this thing many, many times, healthy patients. Everything happens for this reason. So this was from my side. Thank you very much. I, I will be happy to, uh, to answer any questions and discuss any other topics uh, following up. Now, I think uh, we have to move to, to the most important person to, in this talk, Dr. Mohammed who has to give us great impact for the process itself. Thank you very much. Absolutely. That, uh, that was a great insightful look into the world of histopathology, Alex. Thank you so much for taking us through that. And as he mentioned, yes, now we'll be moving to the important aspect, which is the end use aspect of uh, histopathology. And I'd like to hand over the floor to Mohamed for uh, giving his view on the same. Uh, thank you, Malabika. Thank you, Alexander, for the uh, um, uh, uh, beginning and the uh, introduction of the um, uh, you know portfolio of uh, success in the field. Um, uh, so uh, here I'm going to uh, to talk about uh, the histopath techniques. I will go through the histopath techniques. What is meant by histopath techniques? and how histopath techniques serve the diagnosis and also help in the process of um, uh, 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 clinical diagnosis. So usually um, uh, throughout my experience of about 10 years in this field of histopath techniques and uh, um, uh, uh, teaching students, all the time to highlight the importance of this field um, to my students, I usually start my uh, my lectures or my uh, laboratories with a, with a, an inspiring story that happened to me personally that uh, uh, my mom has been into uh, some kind of cancer that's um, hitting the, 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 the cartilage and the bone in the hip area. And those days, um, the only treatment known is the amputation. 
Um, luckily, the surgeon was up to date and he asked for a cryostat um, to be done. He sent the sample within maybe um, uh, 15 to 20 minutes came back that there is no metastasis to the muscles around the bone. Um, uh, so he could remove the area of the bone that could that was affected. And that was ending with um, no amputation, which would really affected um, uh, the life of my mom for the, for the for, from that time till now, which is really um, reflecting in, on all patients um, uh, under the operation or even before the diagnosis or even before getting the therapy. Um, the histopathological techniques play a, an important role uh, in this uh, in this area. So here, just um, I'm going to 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 just go through the these um, what are histopath techniques, what are the um, uh, uh, the aspects of the histopath techniques. Now, if we look at the histopath techniques, um, as Alexander um, uh, mentioned, that it's dealing with tissues, and these tissues they obtained from patients. And these tissues, they are um, uh, processed into a way that they will be suitable to be viewed by um, the people who are going to do the diagnosis, mainly the clinicians or the pathologists. Based on this one, they will get into a diagnosis. Based on this diagnosis, then there will be a treatment or a protocol. This is making a difference a lot for the patient. Um, uh, and in principle, if we want really to, to identify the tissue processing is um, uh, bringing the tissue that's obtained in an operation or uh, any way like biopsy into a medium that it will support it for sectioning. So we are working on preparing the tissue in different steps to um, uh, uh, place it into that medium and make it possible to get very thin sections and load them on the, into the slides to do staining, and then we will be able to visualize them. Um, throughout all of this process, we need to maintain the tissue to be as normal as we obtain it. Um, the tissue might be abnormal for sure, but we need the tissue to be as similar as the status that we obtain. For this, we make sure that the tissue passes through different steps. These steps they are optimized through um, a, a progress of many, many years. And recalling that um, the, the, the science of histology or histopathology is one of the well-established sciences and uh, uh, one of the oldest ones like that started in the um, uh, 19th century. Um, some people talking maybe up before that, um, in the 19th century, people, they started to get tissues and they talking about the um, staining of different components, till then um, the, uh, the discovery or the uh, invention of the microscope uh, uh, by Lewin Hook and, and his colleagues later on and improvements and so on. All of these, they allowed us to study these ones over the years. Over the years, there, there is improvement in this process. So um, we got now a, a routine protocols that allow us to process these tissues, um, different types of tissues to get um, a, a, a clear and uh, precise diagnosis. Um, starting with the tissue collection, um, that's usually performed by the pathologist or the surgeon or the doctor. Um, uh, uh, and these tissues need to be directly fixed into a suitable fixative, which usually we use um, a, a buffer uh, a formalin or natural buffer formalin. In the lab, then these tissues, they undergo trimming kind of uh, uh, we trim these tissues to find out what are the areas in these tissues that they are of interest for later on examination under the microscope. Um, some tissues, they might be amputated organs um, uh, uh, or big organs. These ones, we need to only get small pieces of these ones and load them into the slides to examine them under the microscope. So um, here, the, the, the role of the pathologist as well to determine what are the exact areas that they need examination. Otherwise, this can be make uh, an important area in the tissue can be missed out, and maybe a diagnosis can be also missed out based on this. Then after that, in a series of dehydration, the uh, fixative 
is removed and then replaced by uh, uh, fixative and water um, will be removed and replaced with uh, uh, alcohol to prepare it for next step, which will be the clearing and preparing the sections for the paraffin. For these steps, usually we, because there are many steps, we are talking about maybe 10 to 15 steps, depending on the tissue, depending on the protocol. Um, it's tedious, too many reagents, too many changes, and even um, too many variables. So in the field, um, usually as everything becoming into a time of automation, we have nowadays automated processes where we can place the reagents inside the, 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 the containers and then the, the, the process of changing the tissues from one solution to another solution is computerized and automated precisely. Even though um, uh, the modern processors, they check for the expiry date and the levels of the solution, and they alert the technicians uh, about this kind of thing to be changed or to be uh, uh, addressed. Uh, having that, the tissues, they are prepared and they are embedded in paraffin, giving them a suitable media that will support them. Then we are okay to um, section these ones using the microtomes. In the microtome, what, we, what, we, what is happening is those blocks that they were placed in, 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 in paraffin, um, now they are uh, kind of supported in order to get 10 sections up to maybe five to 10 micrometer thickness which will make them very suitable to, to be stained later on and to be ready for examination by the pathologist. So throughout this process, these tissues, they are prepared um, carefully. Um, many conditions, many factors, many variables, they need to be checked at every step because every mistake can result in a kind of variation in the tissue later on. These ones, they can be detected, yes. They can be addressed, yes. Um, maybe if we are lucky and we have enough amount of tissue, we can return back, but sometimes the tissues, they are very precious. So it's only one time shot. Um, this is kind of um, very important to be going through a well-defined protocol, well-optimized protocol. Um, usually in the labs now, people, they prefer automation because it's um, standardized. Um, and the process is done without any variables. Um, so now, as we are in the 21st century histopathology, um, uh, you, you can realize that this is not only a work of, of, of one technician, it's a teamwork. Um, there is the pathologist, there is the, um, the pathologist, the resident pathologist who is doing the trimming. There is the technician who is, along with the pathologist, determines how is the tissue is going to be oriented in the uh, cassettes. Uh, also, there is the technician who is overseeing the process of the preparation. Um, then after that, there is the staining and all of these processes, which is um, uh, need to be really looked to carefully. Moving to um, currently the era of personalized medicine, where we now um, achieving a degree of knowledge that we are making a personalized diagnosis bear a patient. For example, bear a cancer patient. We all of us we know that cancers. There are many cancers. Each patient they got their own different kind of cancer with different kind of mutations. Um, these ones now getting into personalized medi uh, medicine, where we need to find the diagnosis at the cell level, and we need to design or get the medications that suitable for that kind of cancer um, or that pathology. Uh, uh, also, at the level of di molecular diagnostics, we are looking at the mutations, at the problems in the RNA expression, uh, problems in the protein, um, uh, all of these things, um, they are um, evolving a lot and they are changing uh, daily. So this science, since the, the, the beginnings, more than 100 years ago, it's never been the same. Every day there is changes, even the patients, they are changing, um, the uh, diagnosis is changeable. All of this kind of thing is providing with a cumulative kind of. Uh, of uh, this is just an overview uh, about the histopathology, and uh, um, uh, thank you very much for your um, uh, joining and listening. Thank you, uh, 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 Leader Life Sciences, for bringing this up. It's an important issue, and people they need to be aware about it. Uh, thank you, guys, and uh, all happy for the discussion.
Absolutely, absolutely, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, thank you so much for the presentation. It was definitely an amazing uh, refresher for the health of pathology process. And uh, uh, also allow me to uh, uh, sincerely thank you for sharing your story of how uh, uh, your mother's uh, uh, diagnosis through with the help of a cryostat actually uh, drove you to uh, uh, develop an interest in histopathology and uh, eventually being a part of this uh, uh, industry and sector. And uh, interestingly, uh, um, the first cryostat, uh, since you've uh, mentioned in your uh, uh, sorry that uh, it was uh, uh, it was involved in the quick diagnosis or the emergency diagnosis uh, uh, that happened. So the first uh, cryostat ever developed was actually developed by uh, the founder of SLE, uh, Kenneth uh, SLE in 1954. So it's definitely a beautiful synergy that we have here uh, in this webinar. So yeah, again, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for uh, this presentation and now, uh, our speakers are going to have a discussion uh, addressing how histopathology affects uh, diagnosis and prognosis of an illness. Uh, uh, let's look at the first uh, discussion point. Uh, so from... Uh, uh, from a manufacturer's point of view, Alex, uh, uh, how do you think uh, reaching a successful diagnosis at a lab, how do you think uh, 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 the technology, uh, uh, of course, the technology really contributes to uh, uh, reaching uh, a successful diagnosis, but what are the uh, different gaps uh, to be addressed uh, that you think uh, 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 technology can fulfill? Mm -hmm. Uh, so yes, uh, thank you for this this nice question. This is always an interesting topic uh, about uh, you know from the manufacturer's perspective, how we enhance productivity in the labs, uh, how we enhance uh, the accuracy of the process. Uh, so the answer from our side is always going to be technology. But uh, technology by itself uh, cannot solve all the problems, not until today, <laughs> to be honest, uh, unless there's a crazy hidden project that I'm not aware of. <laughs> so uh, until today, what we try to do is to find the perfect balance. So to introduce as much of technology as it is possible in the process, but still use the human experience and uh, the human knowledge throughout the process to, to, to get the best result. So <clears throat> unfortunately, until today, it's not possible, or fortunately, maybe, <laughs> uh, this is a big discussion, big long discussion. Uh, technology cannot do everything. So there are uh, sensitive processes throughout the process itself, uh, like uh, uh, the part of the orientation uh, during embedding or uh, the orientation during sectioning, because uh, this is a very important part. Uh, we, we usually talk about sections, how easy they are made, or how, uh, how fast can we make them, but uh, sometimes we forget the most important part, which is accuracy. If we don't have accuracy throughout the process, then the result, the fast result, has no meaning. So this is why we try to introduce the most advanced technologies and uh, the, the most of the automation that we can throughout the process to make the life of the users in the labs easier and the outcomes uh, faster. But on the same time, we test thoroughly every technology in order to be sure that we have the best result. And this is where uh, the experience of uh, a histopathology or a histotechnician comes in and uh, with combination uh, with the technology that we provide, uh, give out the, the, the very good result and the, the correct diagnosis. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, for your answer. Uh, it was quite insightful uh, to hear from a uh, manufacturer's point of view. And now I will uh, address the same question to uh, Dr. Mohammed. So, uh, Dr. Mohammed, how do you think? What are the different aspects uh, um, 
in your opinion, that should be emphasized upon and uh, uh, are uh, super significant when it comes to uh, reaching a successful diagnosis in a laboratory? Um, yes, it can accept automation at certain stages, um, which is the processing of tissue, but the human factor is needed there. Um, you can't get the robot, for example, to decide during the operation which is the tissue that need to be um, processed later on. Um, maybe now people, as Alex uh, mentioned, maybe they are working on artificial intelligence kind of algorithms. Um, so far, up to our knowledge, there is nothing would replace the human factor, especially in getting the biopsies, in, in trimming the tissues, determining which is the area of the tissue that needs to be processed, the orientation, um, even the testing of the slides after obtaining, um, determining whether they are good slides or bad slides, um, definitely it would, would need to be more So um, uh, I'm kind of against people who are mentioning even like uh, in the medical laboratory field that uh, automation now going to replace us, we're going to be obsolete. Um, no, it's, it's not yet. Um, so uh, it might be maybe in some other um, sessions, like in, in the sections of the lab, like clinical chemistry, where there is huge stations that they process the sample from A to Z, but this is not going to have any history, at least in the, in the near future. Um, so definitely, I agree with, with Alex um, uh, uh, on the need of human factor, but also um, uh, I need to add that the instrumentation itself need to address the precision of the process. For example, if we come to the microtome, Microtome is required to produce consistent um, uh, thick, the thickness of the sections. Um, sections with maybe just consistently three micrometers uh, thickness. And um, we don't want to have, for example, a section that is maybe half five microliter and half 10 microliters, or maybe alternatively when one section is thick, one section is thin. So here come the, 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 the automation or the machine stability to support this process and make it easy. Um, the same for the staining. Um, in the staining, definitely the staining, by the way, is tricky because dealing with the stain means that you need to look for the age of the stain, the expiry of the stain, the preparation, um, whether there is dehydration, oxidation, and many other factors for the staining. Um, uh, in my opinion, um, automation of the staining process is one of the successful things that happened in this field because when you're dealing with um, a, a standard procedure that's happening a part of many other variables, this really makes the uh, output of the slides um, more consistent and more easy for making the diagnosis later on and reducing the time to return back and generate newer sections. Imagine that a patient were waiting for a diagnosis or a decision for the treatment. Um, the process might take from the taking the biopsy to getting the diagnosis um, two to five days. Um, depending on the setup. Sometimes if there is a problem, you need to again do it again, which means that another two to five days, it's a prolonging the process. So here the automation is very important. And um, uh, definitely um, the, the manufacturers, they, they really appreciate this kind of thing and they're looking into it um, uh, uh, precisely to, to be sure that these instruments, they are going to produce uh, standardized, uh, kind of uh, output. Absolutely, absolutely. I completely uh, agree with you, Dr. Mohammed, and thank you for your answer. So, uh, I've, I, this the next uh, discussion point is quite interesting, uh, and it would be great to hear it from you as a scholar. Uh, so, um, it's 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 quite known that uh, during our during undergrad or when uh, developing the skills and histopathological techniques uh, in general, uh, manual uh, models of uh, the histopathology uh, uh, equipment is preferred to teach uh, students so that they would be able to, of course, uh, know the foundation and the basis. But now that the world is moving towards an automation, uh, an automated uh, uh, laboratory, um, do you like? Uh, do you think that it might be more important now? The importance has increased uh, for uh, tomorrow's histopathologists 
to learn uh, on automa uh, automation uh, technology or uh, would it still be like a, a team manual equipment? <laughs> um, uh, uh, really personally, I, I prefer to, to, to get the students through the manual part first to get into all of the hectic things that are related to the manual part and also to get into those problems that they might um, encounter, the troubleshooting, how they do it. Once they master these ones, it will be easy for them to appreciate the importance of automation. Um, uh, and you know, the appreciated things come from really experiencing the hard thing. Um, uh, and also, not all of the setups really in the hospitals uh, have the luxury of automation. Um, uh, they might not afford to get uh, maybe automated processes. So uh, this thing really makes uh, difficult for the students to start with the um, traditional or the uh, methods that they are before the automation, and then after that they introduce to the automation. For example, we have a lab that addressing the tissue processing, the old-fashioned way, and then after that we introduce them to the automated processor and how it's working and how they are using. Um, we got it there and they see it how it's working. Now they are mastering both things. The same for microphone. They do the with the manual microtome and then there's the uh, automated microtome and so on. This way, they are um, just mastering both things, covering all of the areas or all of the, all of the labs that are going to go into. And all the time, you are really not guaranteed that you will have a way. Uh, absolutely. I definitely understand uh, the point you and uh, Dealing with the manual uh, uh, equipment first, definitely, like uh, uh, from my personal experience, definitely taught me a lot. Uh, I didn't even know that there were automated uh, uh, microtomes and automated stainers. We had to go through the whole process, which kind of makes it stick to your head. So I definitely uh, uh, I agree with you. Uh, but I would like to also uh, 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 give uh, Alex the same question. So uh, since uh, SLE is uh, a pioneer at manufacturing automated uh, uh, histopathology technology, do you think, do, do you have a different point of view uh, that you can shed light uh, onto? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I'm more or less in the same side with Dr. Mohammed. I do believe that uh, a good balance is uh, the answer to your question. So in my opinion, it's good that students get the chance to work manually so that they understand in depth the process itself. But then also is good, of course, uh, when it is possible uh, to, to get in touch with uh, uh, the, the last uh, word of technology, to use technology, to know how to utilize technology to achieve a faster or better result uh, and get trained for the real world. Of course, we always need to get into consideration, uh, speaking about different uh, countries or different markets, that uh, what is the actual situation in the labs? Uh, because uh, uh, there are markets that uh, like uh, possibly is uh, United Emirates that uh, mm -hmm. everything is automated. You see high levels of technology, but uh, there are other markets that some things even in uh, actual labs still uh, still going on manually. You, you, you still have to, to, to do things in a more primitive way. So for this reason, the best possible to do is to have people train in both techniques, have them deeply understand the techniques and then give them the opportunity to also get trained in technology. Absolutely. So I just like to add that we had a small poll for our audience as well right now, uh, where 78 percentage of them had said that we need to have automation uh, in the during the education level itself. So I think a lot of them are siding with Alexander on this one. Uh, so yeah, okay. Uh, so let's uh, move on to the next uh, point, which would be what are the 
uh, gaps that you think needs to be addressed for you know to 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 address the increasing cases that has come on uh, coming in in terms of uh, in the in terms of diagnosis and prognosis so uh, from a manufacturer perspective what do you think alexander right so uh, the biggest challenge uh, that um, we need to face is to take the process one uh, level forward. So at the moment, we have made the, the most of uh, the available technology. Of course, uh, you still see improvements uh, in the throughput of the instruments or uh, some things get more automated, some processes get more automated, uh, but uh, we need to use more and more uh, the software and uh, uh, tools like uh, uh, like uh, the AI that uh, Dr. Mohammed referred uh, before. These are things that uh, we, we, we need to introduce. But uh, the point is that every new technology uh, needs a level of uh, development, which is normally long because you need to develop a new technology. First of all, to, to get the new concept, then to, to develop this technology up to the point that uh, it's uh, efficient and it gives a proper result, a consistent result, which is also important. And then you need to reach to the level that you make it commercially available. So in uh, business terms, this means that uh, you can produce this uh, product uh, in mass production and then you can also offer it in a price that it's uh, logical for the market because you know we 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 can't provide the microton that costs like 1 million dollars or something this is this is not something that it's ready to be commercialized but uh, i'm sure that the market uh, works towards this way of course in any way as much automation as you want to introduce keep in mind that in the end of the day it's human that, uh, you know, that have to, to, to program and to, 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 to get into consideration all the, all the aspects that need to be taken care of. So uh, in any way, you can exclude the human from this process, but you have to give them the tools to do their job faster and uh, more accurately. And... Um, Given the chance, I would also like to answer a nice question that I saw from the general uh, chat. Uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed Al Sahar asked uh, if uh, manufacturers can include software similar to facial recognition techniques uh, for tissue recognition, and uh, uh, maybe this helps to the orientation during embedding or uh, during trimming. Uh, Interesting topic, like your question, it takes a lot of discussion from the point of manufacturer. Things are not as simple as they look. Uh, because, uh, you know, first of all, you have to do with uh, a big diversification of the cases. It's not as simple as to recognize a face, which can also be challenging, but at least you have some standards that you follow. Uh, speaking about one species which is human and uh, a general construction of the face which is two eyes here, one nose and one mouth here. Also, you have to take into consideration that uh, you, you talk about instruments that get dirty. So you have to take this into consideration when you place sensors uh, in, into place, etc. And then you have to be 100 sure that what you have developed works perfectly 100% or at least 99.9% .9 of the cases. Because if you lose, if you lose diagnosis in three or five specimens, you put three or five lives into danger. It's not as simple as, uh, you know, you lose the face recognition of your phone, then you cannot unlock it, but then you have a, a password that you can use alternatively, or you can, just go to the manufacturer and ask for a different phone or for a better sensor. This is human lives in the line, and we have to be very careful for every technology that every new technology that we introduce. 
consistency is maybe even more important than the outcome. Absolutely. So, yeah, so it, it has to be a slow, gradual process where, you know, you achieve things in, uh, in a consistent manner than, you know, a faster manner. So it's more of effective than a quicker sort of man thing. So um, I, I propose the same uh, question to you, Mohammed, as well. So well, what do you feel are the gaps from a user end of perspective that, you know, might make things move faster, the diagnosis move faster, the prognosis be more accurate? Uh, I would really uh, refer to what uh, Alex was mentioning. And this is uh, like from experience only like within maybe previous four years, I was following up the um, companies that they are producing intelligence, identifying the problems and the bone marks. Um, uh, starting from maybe about five years ago, um, these uh, programs, they were all- so I uh, I'm sorry, Mohammed, uh, yeah. your voice is uh, breaking up a little bit. Is it, so. is it now okay? Yeah, yeah, this is perfect. This is yeah, perfect. Uh, okay. Um, so, uh, uh, like, uh, the, the, as example in the in the area of blood films and the hematopathology, diagnosis of the abnormal blood cells. Um, at the beginning, these algorithms or artificial intelligence was only able to identify uh, normal white blood cells. Um, uh, last year, only in the mid lab in Dubai, for example, I came through. Um, systems that they were able to take an image of each or every single cell in the blood film and profile it alone in an image, quantifying all of these cells, um, flagging the abnormal cells, all of these ones through scanning all of the blood film, which is really a huge change within a few years. Would be the same maybe happening for the um, uh, identification of the sections that's in the pathology field. Uh, uh, honestly, I haven't come through this one so far. Um, this is one side. This is in the automation. Also, the process of diagnosis can be also uh, um, improved um, through improving the interaction or the communication. Uh, uh, I was uh, part of a presentation that uh, um, being delivered by a Brazilian pathologist. That was like in 2015. I was. Um, he introduced a successful story on how the pathologists in Brazil, where they are suffering from the very few number of pathologists, um, to overcome the huge amount of the diagnosis through making up a mobile application that's connecting the remote labs when they achieve the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, the slides, um, staining and being ready, with the um, low cost cameras attached to the microscope, they take the photos and then they share them on the um, uh, uh, mobile phone application, allowing for the diagnosis that's remotely without, um, without maybe um, sending the slides from one city to another city, which is taking longer time, or the pathologist have to travel from one hospital to another hospital. And he was talking about now big network that's covering uh, Brazil. Um, uh, these things maybe also need to be looked at in the terms of improving the process of the diagnosis and accelerating the process. Maybe the, 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 the tissue um, processing itself um, is well developed and well mature process in terms we can't really cut it um, in, the, in the conventional uh, histopathology, um, uh, putting aside the cryostat, which is um, uh, like kind of a special case, but we can think about innovative areas that can be improved uh, in this country, for sure. Absolutely. That's that, that's a great look into the whole uh, idea of the, this thing. So unfortunately, we have to come an end to the discussion right now. Uh, we'll move on to a question and answer session, and uh, we'll take the questions from the audience right now. I think we've already started with uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes. Uh, so I think uh, we'll start with um, a question from Mr. Ben Blasto. If I'm yeah. It correctly. So, can the manufacturers try to produce a machine that does uh, automatic uh, staining? Uh, Alex, would you like to answer? 
<laughs> well, I would say that uh, there are already some solutions of uh, automatic staining. Um, this is this is something uh, that we provide. Uh, I mean, today you pretty much don't have to do anything. You just enter the slides uh, in the automatic stainer and then you get them out stained. Uh, maybe maybe uh, the question had to do about uh, the whole process being automated or maybe some auto combinations. I'm, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, staining today is actually automated. We have stainers. And uh, uh, from our perspective, we have also provided stainers that uh, can be paired with uh, your mobile phone, your tablet, so you can even um, you can even attend the process uh, from uh, some distance. So you can even uh, do some other things when when the staining is happening. And um, something that we also to, to try to do as much as possible in our instruments is taking care of the of the health and uh, uh, of the user and the, of the fact that the user should, should be safe. So in every stainer that we provide or in every tissue processor, you have uh, systems that protect you from the fumes, exhaust systems passing uh, through filters. So. This is pretty much my answer. Staining, I would say that is pretty much automated already yeah. nowadays. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then uh, there's also another question uh, directed to, to you, Alex. So uh, regarding the accuracy mentioned uh, in the beginning of the slide, uh, does that involve the improvement of uh, image resolution and recording or uh, were you prefer? Uh, were you referring to something else? Can you rephrase somehow this question because it's not really clear to me what what you need. So, uh, uh, in the beginning of your slides, when you were uh, talking about uh, uh, enhancing the accuracy of uh, diagnosis and all of that, the, does that involve uh, the improvement of the image resolution? I'm guessing uh, they mean under a microscope, which is not really. Uh, um, uh, what we have discussed earlier, and uh, is uh, is the whole process recorded? Do, do you mean that the process is being recorded? The whole process that we do, like, or do you or think you mean... that the image resolution also plays uh, an important role? Um, sure. I mean, uh, the the if I understand well what you mean, the resolution of. Uh, the section itself in the end of the process is very important and mm -hmm. is determined from you know how correctly the the previous steps have been taken i think this must be from dr mohammed's uh, uh, presentation but nevertheless uh, you know all the steps and most importantly sectioning uh, mm -hmm. but also staining and cover slippery will uh, will determine okay. the outcome and uh, the final resolution of uh, the section under the microscope. Mm -hmm. So uh, unfortunately, I cannot say more about microscopes because we don't provide microscopes. But up to the point that uh, the section will reach the microscope, uh, it's really determined by every step in the process. So uh, the tissue processing in the beginning, it has to be done uh, correctly so the uh, the orientation throughout embedding has to be correct in order to be able to section mm -hmm. uh, in the proper way the tissue then sectioning has to be uh, done correctly not to have uh, shattered or bad quality sections and then of course even staining has to happen correctly in order to have nice contrast on your tissue and this is something that, that uh, maybe in the old days uh, you kind of lost to Alex 
Your voice is breaking up. Or maybe even manufacturers, I agree. Now, this is why provide in order to do cover sleep in the most proper way and to have the best of uh, the spelling uh, about clubs, the digital pathology. Especially for digital pathology, the resolution and uh, the cover sleeping has to be done properly. Yes, uh, absolutely agree with you. And uh, these steps definitely. Uh, um, uh, it, it, it's definitely important to get these steps uh, right uh, so that uh, the end result uh, of the, and the resolution reflects that as well. So uh, uh, Dr. Mohammed, uh, just, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a very interesting question uh, for you. And it was also a question that I wanted, uh, uh, I would love for you to uh, answer it as well. So. Uh, uh, Mr. Satosh would like to know more about the importance of his pathology uh, diagnosis in the era of personalized uh, or medicine. precision medicine. Yes, thank you for the question. It's a really good question, uh, Santosh. Um, uh, in relation to this one, um, there were a story from a colleague uh, who is a pathologist in Germany. They got that weird kind of weird um, uh, tumor in a, in a younger. And uh, they find out that in the beginning it does not um, responding to the treatment, the usual protocol that they use for that kind of uh, uh, cancer, which is, I think, it was a, a kind of uh, um, liver-related uh, cancer. Uh, so what they thought about is um, they took the biopsy and they sequenced the DNA for the mutations. They found that there is a mutation that also targeting a metabolic pathway in the liver. And based on that one, they tailored a protocol, a therapeutic protocol that targeted that kind of tumor, which was successful. This one of the success story in this field. Um, now, when you come to this uh, kind of um, personalized medicine or diagnosis in, in the histopathology, um, nowadays what we have is kind of uh, uh, microscopes that's equipped with uh, laser scissors, um, where you can target certain areas in the section and maybe excise with the laser um, uh, uh, few cells, maybe single cell, um, that you feel that they are related to the pathology. And then these ones, they can be either uh, go into single cell sequencing, um, like uh, DNA sequencing, uh, uh, and then they can be checked for the mutation. Um, this is what we have so far for the personalized medicine. It's just at the level of the cell, even in the paraffin embedded sections, we can target these single um, abnormal cells, get them ex excised, and also um, process them to find out what are the molecular events that went wrong in this. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Mohammed, for that answer. It's definitely uh, enlightening and yes, of course, uh, like um, uh, it, it, it's great that she kind of bridged uh, uh, that pathway from uh, histopathology to uh, molecular uh, yeah. with with uh, the whole sequencing uh, and all of that from uh, 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 a histopathology uh, uh, sample. Yeah. So we'll have to wrap this up and make this the last question. And let's end on the, the futuristic note of precision medicine. Uh, so if you have any further questions, you can share it with us uh, on our email address, uh, uh, marketing at leadlifesciences.com. Thank you, uh, Alexander and Dr. Mohammed, for taking the valuable time out of your schedule to come and give this very informative and in, in insightful session. And, you know, it was really great to have you on board, both your presentations, the discussions and the questions that answered. It was amazing. Thank you all for attending the webinar and for being a very active participants. And I hope you enjoyed this. Um, please uh, follow us on our social media pages for knowing more what is what our upcoming marketing uh, initiatives and webinars and other events. Thank you for joining all.
thank you rahaf for co-hosting with me and yeah thank you very much for having us today it was really really interesting thank definitely guys. yeah thank you absolutely thank you guys Thanks, thank, you thanks, thank you all. Thank you, Alex. Have a nice day, all of you. you thank you. See you later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.